I have been excited to try SharePoint drafts for a while and it finally made it to the environment where I work. Imagine my disappointment when none of my SharePoint sites had access to this feature. Turns out there are some mandatory settings and they are not always turned on by default. So we're going to look at how to check the settings and then talk about how to use the feature. To make sure we're all on the same page, let's quickly talk about what SharePoint private drafts are. This feature allows you to create a draft for a new page or news item that is only visible to you, the people you shared it with, and the site owners. I have navigated to a site where private drafts are not working. There are four settings that determine if private drafts can be used. Three are documented on the Microsoft support page linked below, and one is not. Let's start with the undocumented setting by going up to the settings icon in the upper right hand corner. Click on settings, site contents, and site settings. Then we're going to go to the site collection administration section and choose site collection features. This page shows several features that may have been turned on by your SharePoint admin. If you see a colored button that says active with the word deactivate next to it, that feature is turned on. Let's scroll down a bit and look at the one that says limited access user permission lockdown mode. This setting prevents some users such as anonymous users from accessing application pages. With private drafts, you can invite someone to edit even if they don't belong to that SharePoint collection. This would put those users in the limited access category. If you want to use private drafts, this must be turned off. As always, consult your best practices before changing the settings. I'm going to click on deactivate, and then you will see a message asking you to confirm that this is the action you would like to take. I will click deactivate this feature to confirm. Now we're going to look at the other settings that are documented in the Microsoft support article. Back on the home page for the site collection, I will click the gear icon and then click site contents. This time we will scroll through the site contents to find site pages. Now that you are in the site pages document library, go back to the gear icon and you will see the option called library settings. A pane will open on the right side of the screen and you will click more library settings. In the general settings category, click version settings. We are finally at the page where you need to look at three different settings. In the content approval section at the top, the private draft feature will not be available if require content approval for submitted items is set to yes. In the document version history section, Create a version each time you edit a file in the document library must be set to create major and minor versions. So I know a lot of people use create major versions. The minor versions have to be turned on too. In the draft item security section, you cannot use only users who can approve items and the author of the item. Either of the other two options are acceptable. If you made any changes, scroll down and click OK. With the settings taken care of, let's look at an example of how to create a private draft. I'm going to create a news item by clicking the drop down next to Add. Choose any template you want. For example, I'm going to use a blank template for the sake of simplicity. At the bottom right of the page, we now have a checkbox for Create a Private Draft. Put a check mark to make sure the draft is visible to only you and the people you share it with. This needs to be done before you click create a post because you cannot change this setting later. I'm going to click on create a post and I can start adding content like I normally would. Just like non-private pages and news posts, only one person at a time can edit the draft. In this scenario, I want Nestor to help me create content and edit the news item. Even though he is not a member of this SharePoint site, I can choose anyone in the organization to share the draft with. I have added my first bit of content. Now I'm ready to share. Notice that it is marked as a private draft in the upper right hand corner where you see the lock icon. Because this is a private draft, share draft is on the ribbon towards the left side of the screen. 
Now you will see a send a link dialog box, which may be familiar to you because it's the same dialog box used to share Word documents, PowerPoint, etc. In the to field, you can search for any name in your global address list. So I'm going to select Nestor. If you look to the right side of the dialog box, you will see a pencil icon, which means that you are sharing a link to edit. If you click the drop down, notice that edit is the only option. You cannot grant read only access. But that's okay. The whole point of inviting Nestor was so he could help me edit. Now it's time to send him the link and I can do that in one of two ways. I can add an optional message and click send, which will trigger an email to his Outlook inbox. Or I can click copy link and then send the link via Teams, text message, or whatever makes sense to you. Today I choose send because I know Nestor prefers email. Now it is time to save my work and exit the page so Nestor can edit. I know a lot of us are used to clicking on post news, but we don't want to do that because it will make the page visible to everyone. Instead, I want to click save as draft. Now Nestor is a fake user in a development environment, so I have access to his box. So we're going to switch profiles and now we are in Nestor's Outlook account. The top email is the sharing link to our private draft. To access the page, all Nestor must do is click on the open button. We are back at our sample news item and in the upper right hand corner, Nestor can click on edit. When a private draft is shared, the images and files used on the page are also shared with everyone who has edit access. For this particular example, we're just going to keep it simple and use text only. Nestor has added a section to the article describing which settings need to be checked first. Let's say that he also wants to change the header style from overlap to plain. You can continue co-editing by clicking save as draft and other people invited to collaborate can add their content. I'm not going to make you watch me build a whole news page, so we will pretend that this page is finished. Go to the upper right hand corner and click post news. A ready to post pop-up box is letting us know that if someone does not have access to the site, they will lose access once the page is published. Remember I said Nestor does not belong to the SharePoint site collection. So after he clicks post news, if he tries to come back to this page, he will see a message saying, sorry, you don't have access. Now I logged in as myself and I'm back on the SharePoint homepage. In the news feed, I can see the news page we just created. There is much more to learn about Microsoft 365 tools. Check out this video that YouTube is recommending for you to watch next. And I will see you over there in the next video.